Hey guys, this is Sean with Long Long Honeymoon coming at you with a product review that is highly unusual. It's unusual because it's been almost a decade in the making. Today we're taking a look at our own Yamaha EF3000i SEB. Yes, this is a gasoline powered generator that we have used with our Airstream for almost a decade. Okay guys, so here's a real world look at our generator, which we call Franklin. Now the EF 3000 ISEB is a unique unit in the marketplace. It's unique because of the B in the nomenclature and the B stands for boost. Now, the generator will deliver an extra 500 watts or so of boost when needed for like 10 to 15 seconds. When would you need an extra 500 watts of boost? Well, it comes in very handy when you're starting an RV air conditioner. Although it's a 3000 watt class of generator and has 3000 in the name, actually outputs about 2800 running watts of power. The boost bumps it up to around 3300 running watts for that brief moment in time. So that's what really attracted me originally to this unit. The boost feature the electric start in the economy mode. When you engage the economy mode, the engine throttles down and it will throttle up according to power demand. Yamaha is currently juicing up our Airstream batteries and you can probably tell it's a pretty quiet generator. Right now we do have the economy mode engaged. I'm gonna flip off the economy mode just to show you the difference. And so, now what you're hearing is basically this generator running at full blast. Even at full blast, it's still very quiet. But you activate economy mode and the generator throttles down and it'll throttle back up to meet whatever power demands are placed upon it. My favorite feature is the turnkey electric start. Unfortunately, over the years, this start has developed a little issue in that it doesn't want to turn off using the key. I'm sure it's probably a $10 switch inside that needs to be replaced, but what we're doing instead to turn off the generator is to simply cut off its fuel supply. For example, by pulling out the choke. I really love being able to quickly activate electricity for our Airstream with a simple turn of a key. From the moment we put the truck in park, within about 60 seconds, we can have electricity. The build quality of these units is simply excellent. Over the years, we've had this generator in pretty much every conceivable environment. It's been in baking heat. It has been in snow. It's been in rain, unfortunately. Now, the unit has not been sitting outside for 10 years. When it is not in use, paired with our Airstream, we keep it inside a cozy garage where it sits on my workbench. Cosmetically, it's held up pretty well over the years. Uh, this is sort of a polycarbonate uh, surface on either end cap that has kind of faded over the years. The main body of the generator is metal. You can see a little bit of oxidation in the metal in places, but overall it looks pretty good, especially considering that it's been exposed to the elements as much as it has. On the top, there is a fuel gauge. The problem with fuel gauge over the years, it has become a bit cloudy. You can still read the fuel level looking through it, but it's certainly not crystal clear the way it was in the early days. Pouring fuel on the top, this generator actually gets wonderful fuel economy. We very rarely have to add fuel unless we're running the air conditioner and are really pushing it near the top of its capacity. You know, even the gas cap is a full metal gas cap. And when you uh, open it up inside, you will find a little fuel filter residing at the top of the generator to strain out any impurities in your gasoline. The Yamaha does not include an RV plug. What it does have is the locking 30 amp outlet. We use this 30 amp connector I hook up an extension cord to this connector 
and that allows me to quickly get power to our RV. On the face of the generator, you'll see the main control panel. You've got the fuel supply. Here you have the economy mode switch, the turnkey electric start, the choke. There are a couple of warning lights. You need to pay attention to the low oil warning light, which hopefully you never see. And there's also an overload warning light, which you may occasionally see if the generator is unable to deliver enough power. You know, with these generators, you can't run your microwave, your curling iron, and your air conditioner at the same time. You're gonna have to pick and choose which appliance you want to power. Now, I do love the turnkey electric start, but it's not without its downsides. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Specifically, there is a cost in terms of weight. In fact, I have here in my hands a battery that goes inside this generator. This battery is pretty heavy. These batteries are not terribly expensive, but they are a maintenance item and there's something that you're gonna to have to replace from time to time. Here we go, ready? Yeah. Yippee! Yeah! Woo! Victory! <laughs> Another exciting episode of Generator Repair. So although the generator does have a turnkey electric start, it also has a pull start as a backup. Again, that's a nice feature that you really have both on this unit. Of course, the generator does have a built-in wheel kit. It's a pretty good wheel kit. It's certainly better than no wheel kit at all. However, the generator weighs 150 pounds. So it's a lot for any one person to lift and usually lifting it is a two-person job, which is why they've thoughtfully put two handles on the unit. Uh, and the wheel kit works pretty well for just rolling it in and out of the bed of a pickup truck or rolling it around on the ground. There is no telescoping handle or anything like that. There's also no fancy LCD display. You don't get any of those luxuries with this basic control panel. Main maintenance you need to be aware of with the generator is, uh, of course, oil changes. Step one, warm up the bus. Oil changes can be a little messy. You access the oil reservoir through this front panel and that's easy enough but they've kind of uh, not really thoughtfully designed the interior from an oil change standpoint you're probably going to spill a little oil unless you're very careful and that oil can pool in the bottom of the machine so watch out for that they also have an air filter that you'll want to change on an ongoing basis but overall this generator has been a very reliable performer we call him franklin Franklin has been plugging away for almost 10 years. Overall, it's been reliable with that one unfortunate episode in which we found a piece of broken weld inside the head. Now, for some of you, that may be like saying, other than that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? <laughs> did encounter a very serious problem with the generator. I don't really know the source of that problem. We don't know why that piece of metal was inside the head. I've never done this before in my life. I don't believe that. Is that true? That's true. Never worked on one of these before in my life. We found what was in the generator. Today's we don't know 19. what that is or where it came from, but that was what's melting on with the motor. Have we had a few bumps in the road over the past 10 years with this unit? Yes, we had one particularly nasty bump about five years ago, but we were able to diagnose and repair the problem specifically with the help of Christy's father, Harry. Success. And ever since we fixed that problem, the unit has performed pretty much flawlessly. You can install a remote 
start kit which I believe costs two or three hundred bucks and I've certainly thought about that because I'm enticed by the idea of starting this unit remotely from inside our Airstream but I've heard some reports that the remote start kit has some reliability issues it could introduce complexity and frankly it's one more thing that could go wrong <laughs> so I've chosen not to install the remote start kit this generator also has dual fuel capability you can buy a carburetor modification I believe that will allow you to power the generator with either propane or with gasoline so in summation after 10 years you've got to ask would I recommend this unit for other RV campers my answer is yes i think the longevity of this unit speaks for itself it still purrs like a kitten when we crank it it's almost 10 years old and we're still using it today in much the same manner as we did a decade ago there aren't too many products you can buy these days uh, with the confidence you're making that kind of long-term investment so when you look at the prices for the various generators that are on the market, you've got to take that into consideration. The reason that Honda and Yamaha are priced at a premium is because they're built to exacting standards. They do what they're supposed to do. They do it typically uh, with very little trouble or fuss, and they do it for a very long time. So there aren't too many products in the world you can say that about. So I have to give this generator my highest recommendation. I've put it to the test in demanding conditions for almost 10 years and it's still going today. That says a lot. Well done, Franklin. If you have questions about generators, you're interested in purchasing a generator for your RV, be sure to check out rvgenset.com. At rvgenset.com, you'll find a comprehensive list of pretty much every generator that is made for RV uses. If you are new here, please subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Subscriptions are very important to us and they ensure that you will never miss a video, including the upcoming generator reviews that we will be presenting. And yes, we will be pitting good old Franklin against some of the new Youngblood generators from other companies to see who comes out on top. Until next time, thanks for tuning in, subscribe, and lo lo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.